I have to be honest with you and tell you that I'm not a big fan of holidays. I really don't like anything that disrupts my normal routine and regular schedule. But of all the holidays I dislike, Easter has to be my least favorite. And it's not for something as small as disrupting my schedule. You see, when I was nine years old, my mother, my father, and my sister were murdered inside our family home, and it was all my fault. It was an Easter Sunday, and it was back in the day before the internet and the 24-hour news stations made everybody terrified about the world. So back then, parents would send their kids outside in the morning and tell them to come home at dinner time. But on this Easter Sunday, I was sent out by my mother with a purpose. See, there was this farmer's market down the street from where we lived, and she sent me there to see if I could purchase a pumpkin pie while she cooked the turkey. I made my way down to the market, not really expecting it to be open on the holiday, but was surprised to find out that there were in fact a few vendors set up and doing business. One of them was a nice old lady who was selling her baked goods, and she happened to have one pumpkin pie left, so I purchased it. As I was making my way back to the street, another vendor stopped me and asked me if I had any money left. He was a tall man with long hair and a ponytail, and I got this really creepy vibe from him. I didn't know if he was thinking about robbing me or not, so I kind of answered his question by downplaying how much cash I had left in my pocket. I don't have much, I said. Just maybe a couple bucks. Oh well, he said. Listen, it's Easter and I don't really need any cash as it's been a good day. So, I have a gift for you. A gift for me? Why? He pointed to a bunny that was in a little cage with a handle. The bunny was white and sitting in some straw or hay. I don't know what it was. I said that I thought he was kind of cute. It's a she, the man said, named Maisie. You want to take her home to your family? You just want to give her to me? Why? You seem like a nice kid and she's all I have left. I don't want to have to take her back home. You got a mom and dad back at the house? Well, yeah, and a sister. Well, do you want her or not, the man said with the long hair. Sure do, I said. I thanked him and took the bunny home, not sure how my parents would feel about me coming home with an animal. Much to my relief and surprise, they seemed to be okay with it. So my sister and I set up his living quarters as my mother cooked and my father watched sports and drank beer. Everything was great until we sat down for dinner. That's when the little bunny started to change. Okay, I know this is going to sound ridiculous, but the cute little bunny turned into, well, a monster. It's hard to describe what it became, but the best way I can explain it was to say that it became something that was part human and part goat with glowing red eyes. The thing had to be over seven feet tall, or at least very close to it with a goat head and horns and a long, exaggerated human body. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I sat there and just stared at it, as did the rest of my family, and that's when it attacked. Jumped on my father first, I guess him being the biggest threat, and started biting him. I couldn't believe it when I heard him scream. It looked like the thing was eating his flesh. My mother saw the same thing and grabbed my little sister up in her arms and tried to run up the stairs, but the monster saw her going and tackled her when she was halfway up the stairs. Suddenly I heard a loud knock at the door and heard the booming voice of my uncle as he yelled, What the hell is going on in there? I screamed his name as loud as I could and I told him to run, but that's not what he did. He kicked open the front door and looked at me and my father's dead body. My father was his brother, by the way. I pointed to the staircase and when he saw that the thing was on top of my mother and sister, he reached into the back of his waistband and pulled out his gun. He ran towards the stairs. The goat monster heard him coming and turned to stare at him and let out this demonic growl. My uncle, unfazed, pointed the pistol at the thing's head and pulled the trigger, shooting it between its glowing red eyes. The monster let out an angry scream before turning into a bright ball of light and disappearing. My uncle had saved my life, but it was too late for my father, sister, and mother. They were all dead. Now it's 21 years later and a lot has happened in my life. I was raised by my aunt and uncle, now both deceased, and I spent 11 years in the military trying to make the world a better place. I'm not sure if I accomplished anything or not, but I have to tell you, I always felt like a coward for not hunting down the man that gave me that rabbit and finding out if he was part of it, as I suspect he was. So that brings us to today, the Saturday before Easter Sunday, and I made my way back to the farmer's market in my small town to see if I could find that guy. Guess what? It took me all of 15 minutes before I stumbled across his booth. 
He was selling vegetables mostly, but behind his table in the back of a van with its side door open, I saw a bunny rabbit in a little wire cage. How much for the rabbit? I asked the man. He's not for sale, the man said, looking me up and down. Say, do I know you? Come on, I said, everything is for sale for the right price. What do you want? You don't understand, young man. It's a very special rabbit. But I guess I could let him go for, say, 200? Special rabbit, eh? What's so special about him? Ah, you wouldn't believe me if I told you, the man said. But I'll tell you anyways. He looked around to make sure nobody was listening and said, He has magical powers. You take this rabbit home, he'll change your life. Fine. Sold. Man, the guy answered, it's just a rabbit. I'm messing with you. You said $200 and I agreed to that price. So, do we have a deal? You're crazy, kid, the long-haired man said. But if you want him, I'll tell you what. I'll give him to you for the 200 and I'll throw in a 50-pound bag of food. Write down your address for me and I'll deliver him to you tonight. I went home and waited for the man to show up, but wasn't surprised when he called me just after 6 and told me he was running late and would see me bright and early in the morning. I knew he wasn't coming in the morning and that he was coming later that evening when he thought that I was asleep. So at a reasonable hour, I shut off the living room lights and TV and went upstairs. I turned on the bedroom lights for about five minutes before shutting them off, making sure it looked like I had retired for the evening. Yeah, I knew he was watching me. In the dark, I made my way back down to the main floor and sat in my favorite chair waiting for him to enter the house. It took an hour before I heard the sound of the front door handle being turned. I had left the door unlocked to make it easy for him to enter the house. He stepped inside and was quietly closing the door when I turned on the lights. He looked surprised to see me. Well, I guess that answers my question of whether you remember me or not. Of course I remember you, he said. You killed my wife. Actually, it was my uncle that killed your wife, but I did cheer him on as he shot that evil bitch right between her eyes. See, kid, you shouldn't have said that. I stood up from my chair and watched as he turned from a man into a seven and a half foot tall monster. He growled at me as he took a step forward. I smiled at him and gave him a come and get it motion with my hands, which confused him a little bit. Your time is up. He said it in a voice that didn't exactly sound human. But seeing as you and I are old friends, I'll do something for you that I normally wouldn't do. I'll give you a chance to say any last words that you feel you need to say. Well, that's very thoughtful of you, I said. I pointed to his right and asked, By the way, have you met my wife? Slowly, the monster turned to see my wife standing there pointing a pistol at his head. He growled at her and turned to run at her, but she pulled the trigger of the gun and shot him right between the eyes. And just like when my uncle had shot the other monster, when I was a kid, there was a bright flash of light, and then the monster was gone, like he had never been there at all. I looked over at my wife. She didn't say anything, she just stared at me with this concerned look on her face. Gun still in her hand. I understood how she felt, as I had felt the same way when I was a kid and found out that monsters are indeed real. So, I said, realizing that I would have to be the first person to speak. Do you still think I'm crazy? What the hell was that thing? It's called a skinwalker, a demon that feeds on both humans and animals and can take the image of anything that it has dined on. I wouldn't have believed it if I hadn't seen it myself. Well, we can talk about that later, I said, but right now we have to get into the car and start driving. What? Where to? she asked. A little place called Anywhere But Here because I guarantee you he has told some of his buddies about us, and they will come looking for us once they find out that he's gone. After tonight, we can no longer stay in one place for too long, or they will find us, and they will kill us. What are you saying? That we're going to spend the rest of our lives on the road running from these things? Not exactly, I answered. We are going to spend the rest of our lives on the road, but we aren't running from these things. In fact, we'll be running to them. From this point on, you and I are demon hunters. Really, she said. Cool. I'll go pack a bag. <laughs>